Hello, hello, hello. What up, y'all? Welcome to another brand new episode of the world famous, the award winning, that is the Behind the Baller podcast. I am your host, Ben Baller, not Ben Humble, also known as the Korean Liam Neeson, the Korean John Cusack, and the Korean Bruce Willis. What's good, y'all? I am currently in New York City. All right. Crypto is back up, but you know what's back also? Motherfucking some new Omicron variant. I can't keep up anymore. I don't know if it's fucking Om- Oma fucking Delta and fucking uh, goat's piss. I don't know what it's called. Just know there's a new Omicron variant seen all over the JFK airport talking about, hey, be careful. There's a new thing. It's 35% this, this, and this. Look, I just took my motherfucking mask off. Okay. Had to wear one on the plane. It's fine. Look, I, I don't know what to say to y'all, but I'll say this. Kaya is back home sick. My poor little baby. Um, she woke up sick Monday, she was sick Tuesday, and then sick uh, uh, yesterday, and she's feeling better today, she's still not going to school, it's a fucking nightmare situation, especially for my wife to all the shit she's got to deal with, and I had a hell of a day yesterday, I had a motherfucking day, you know what I'm saying, and by the way, I am three weeks now officially into this intermittent fasting, um, and uh, again, it's just, I feel this weird feeling at nighttime. And then during the day is when I'm just like, dog, when is the time to motherfucking eat? Um, And some people say, hey, you're not drinking enough water. And that might be true, even though water is a task, you know. Anyways, we got a very special episode. I say very, we really have a very special episode. I wasn't planning on rushing into this soon, but because my boy is so fucking viral, and it's a weird thing, man. It's a gift and a curse to go viral. And I'm speaking about Alex Choi because right now that Tesla video was one of the biggest talked about things on social media over Ukraine even. So, you know, crazy situation. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. This is just fucking nuts. And um, I'm sure by now everyone who's listened to this podcast has seen the videos. Um, I had them in my stories. Never, ever have I ever had a million views on a fucking Instagram story. I never had more than 400,000 views in my life on an Instagram story. And that's a lot. No cap. There's motherfuckers who got a million followers and even got fucking 25,000 views. But, you know, not everyone's going to go watch your stories. It's a different thing. They have to, right? It just varies. You know, I average maybe 80 to 120K. If it's a big story, 150. Um, crazy. Insane. But Alex Troy, he definitely was there. And he's coming on the show. Very shortly, he is going to go into in depth about the night, the evening of the Tesla jump. Um, he's going to talk about a lot of crazy shit that happened that night. Uh, what this motherfucker was like. Nobody knew, dude. I don't know the motherfucker. People been contacting me. He's like, yo, dude, I don't know shit. So I don't know what you guys are talking about. Um, even, in fact, Elon Musk even tweeted, Teslas do not have the SpaceX technology yet. And, you know, I made a joke about it. People are mad about it. I had fucking 50, 60 people tag me in the fucking tweet like, yo, bro, look at this. You know, I saw it. Even though I don't follow him, I saw it. And, um, you know, people are mad because, you know, the dude, uh, you know, that got his car hit was making a big stink about it. And again, you know, I got to say this. Look, bro, I I know it sucks. Life sucks. Life's not fair. You know, you're you're struggling. You're, You're trying to make shit happen. And you have no insurance. You know what, bro? I was there. I drove with no insurance. I had fucking car accident. I was trying to stunt with no insurance in a Benz and I paid for it, fucked up my credit, ended up being in debt like 40K. You live, I don't know, that's, and it's different things. You're just, you, because you, you have no choice, but it's like, look, bro, stop the cap. Sucks, you know, but a body shop already offered to pay for the entire, all the damages completely. Not only that, you got money off your GoFundMe. You got some popularity, everything else. To go attack Alex, come on, man. Like, really? I I don't know, man. Look, I understand it. People find out, oh, this dude's a little punk. He's a kid. You know, he's a little young kid. He's got Lamborghini. He's got this. And he's just a little bitch. And he's in the car community. His parents are rich, whatever, blah, blah. He doesn't go and brag about his parents being rich. But he's never hidden it. And this is coming from somebody who didn't like Alex. There was a point in time, and I know he's listening to this right now. There was a point in time where I was like, you know what? I'm going to fuck this dude up. And I had even friends be like, yo, dog, don't even, please, dog. I'm not trying to see this kid, man. And it was like weird because he was Korean. He didn't know. Like he just did. He didn't. He 
even to this day, he do you think he has any idea all the fucking accolades I've done in my life? He's too young to remember the shit, right? This motherfucker was born, you know, in in, in the fucking two thousands. It just like by that point, you know, I, you know what I've, I've done since he's been born. It's, it's crazy. So, anyways, I understand why someone might not like him. You know, part of my growth in life is being more open minded. Giving someone a second or third chance. He didn't ask for a second chance, third chance. I gave him one. You know? He, he didn't have any animosity and sit there. And of course, before the, the, five, the fact that, you know, I hit him and he's like, I'm going to fucking sue you. I didn't know if Alex really had any money or anything. I thought he was some kind of clown. I didn't really care. You got, okay, great, dude. Go, let's go. Right? And by the way, you never want to go to fucking court. Court is a fucking nightmare. Okay? And at the end of the day, you know who guaranteed always gets paid? The attorneys. So anyways, back to Alex. He's on the show. He's only 22 years old. And he's lived quite a little bit of a life. He's experienced, you know, quite a bit. And uh, for the most part, I fuck with Alex. Do I co-sign everything he does? Do I condone it? You know, look, man, it's not saying all that. Sometimes, you know, you guys have to realize that this show has become a media outlet. I am a journalist. I report the bad, the good, and everything. Motherfuckers didn't like Vegas Dave. I didn't know shit about dude. Had him on the show. There it is. Let him talk. Had his platform. Oh, give up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no matter what, motherfuckers you don't like are going to get a platform regardless. You know, some people are like, oh man, why you got that fucking uh, Celine or uh, what the fuck was her name? Selena Powell. Like I said, man, good and bad. See what the fuck people is talking about. See what's up. Anyways, this is. One of the most thorough interviews I've done from beginning to end. This is only a little kid. I say that because I'm old enough to be his dad, and we talk about that. But yeah, Alex Choi is coming on the show very shortly. It's been a week. I have a headache. I don't know if it's from the airplane. I don't know what the fuck is going on. But again, I'm thinking about Kaya. I'm thinking about London. Ryder is feeling kind of sick. You know, we tested Kaya. She didn't have COVID. We tested her two days in a row. But you know what? I tested three, four days in a row finally. I had, you know, but at least not yet. You know, I don't know if it's a new fucking Omicron variant. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I just hope she doesn't have it. Uh, London Ryder are vaccinated. I hope they're okay. My man, Max Holloway, aka Blessed MMA, fucking sweetheart. Great dude. I felt like I've known the guy for years and we barely just, just met. And he pulled up to the man cave. He's helping Ryder out with some moves and stuff. He's got a son about London's age and we chopped it up for like an hour. Dude is a fucking great guy. I came with his agent, Chris, man. I got to shout mad love to these dudes. Mad love to the 808, Hawaii. Just a good fucking dude. He's a champ. He's going to fight somewhere around that Israel uh, fight in July. So I'm really hyped, man. Dude's just a super nice guy. Brought me one of his gloves. He got new gloves. And he's, he's one of the most boxingest dude in, in UFC, right? Loves to box. And again, great fucking guy. Class fucking act. So Max, thank you so much. And I appreciate it. And I cannot wait for you to train more with Ryder. We have more time and all that type of shit. Other than that, the positive is cryptocurrency is back up. Okay. I'm not here to bad mouth you good labs or whatever. I didn't even know one of my good friends or old friends, I should say, not good friends, is one of the partners there. Right. But just this week, a couple days ago, Vitalik, right? It's the founder of Ethereum. He said, not verbatim, this is, I read it, but it's pretty much this. The purpose of Ethereum was not to make a lot of money, hoard it, and spend it on cartoon apes. Yo, that shit was fucking funny. And he said, I'm not dissing, you know, um, Board Ape Yacht Club, whatever the fuck it is, but that's fucking funny. You know, like, I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, it's fucking funny as shit. You know, so I don't know, man. Uh, you know what? Actually, I pulled it up right here, guys. And Vitalik said, he told Time Magazine that cryptocurrency isn't meant to be about massive displays of wealth, right? It's like the peril is you have these $3 million monkeys and it becomes a different type of gambling. But he basically was saying the whole shit, you know, but great, board Ape Yacht Club, let them do their thing. I got nothing against it. Um, I have people fucking from the crypto community, like, like I guess reporters and stuff that hit me up. And they want to hear my story about, you know, me being, um, uh, me getting, one, you know, gifted and everything. I don't want to talk about it no more. I don't want to fucking get into it with anybody else. I'm, enough is fucking enough. It is the truth. I'm not, I'm not baller busters. I'll go in and help some shit for some busting stuff. But I'm just like, man, I just, it's just not worth it. But those guys, they really do bust people. I know I've talked about them several times on the show. 
They just busted some girl I've never heard of who has 10 point something million followers. Her name is Natasha Graziano, and she is the female Vegas Dave in a certain way. Tons of bots, tons of fake comments, but she's capped her way so crazy that it's like Vegas Dave. She's capped her way into working with Tim Robbins. Now, I'm talking a lot of real legit people are following her. Real legit business people. All the people I know that are successful, you know, like business, uh, you know, um, advocates, speakers, everything from fucking, I guess, Gary V to like even um, Jim Quick, it's that Asian dude who fucking like teaches people how to read books fast. Like a lot of really reputable people are co signing this chick. It's like, yo. Baller Busters did an hour or more expose on this lady, and it's like, she's all cap. She even posted fucking Forbes covers, you know, magazines being on Forbes magazine. She photoshopped the shit. Like, like, you know how fucking crazy you have to be to be at that level? And she's going to speak with Tony Robbins. There's a lot more, but she's lied about her background, everything. Just fucking crazy. So again, I'm not Baller Busters. Don't hit me to remove anything on Baller Busters. They do their due diligence. They really do. They spend a lot of time looking over shit. Some people don't like it. Hey, man, that ain't on me. Sometimes they could, you know, retract something. I don't know, but it's just not really, you know, but these dudes are solid. And Alex started fucking with them recently because of all the situation with the fucking car charity thing. And then now there's this Tesla thing and other people are tagging him. Alex was just an innocent bystander that took fucking video. It's a fucking night crawler in the car community in a way, and he's a YouTuber. I got nothing against what he did. We're going to get into that interview right motherfucking now, though. And um, I was going to say Miles, but he already played the music. You already know us, my man, Lakey Inspired. And I am going to get Lakey on here. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get into a commercial, and we'll be right back, y'all. From Wondery, the hit podcast, We Crashed, is now an Apple TV Plus series about WeWork, a company that promised utopia but delivered catastrophe. In January 2019, and you're one of thousands of WeWork employees flying into Los Angeles from all over the world, Ashton Kutcher is on stage, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers are there for a private concert. It's the most extravagant company event you've ever seen there's just one problem the charismatic ceo of wework is spending investors money at a reckless rate and in a few months the illusion is going to fade away hosted by david brown of the hit podcast business wars we crashed the director's cut is a refreshed six-part series about the rise and fall of wework and tune in after each apple plus tv episode to the we crash podcast For special bonus episodes hosted by Scott Galloway, one of WeWork's earliest critics as he goes behind the scenes of the new Apple TV Plus series starring Jared Leto and Anne Hathaway. The show is what podcasting is all about. Listen to We Crashed on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or you can listen to it ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app. What's up, y'all? The Sweet 16 is the right time to score in your brackets and in your bank account, too. Create an account at mybookie.ag with promo code BENBALLER and come win with me and the rest of the captains at captainpicks.com. Whether it's college basketball, NBA, NHL, UFC, soccer, tennis, golf, or more, MyBookie has you covered with all the pregame, parlay, prop, and live bets. Come make money at mybookie.ag with promo code BENBALLER today. Yo, 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 what up, BTB Army? Um, As I said, I got a special guest on today. You know, it's really weird because when I met this guy, he wasn't a popular dude. He thought he was popular, but uh, he was just like a little little punk. And then I started to understand the the genius behind him. And um, I think... The fact that he's Korean, it gave me a little more incentive to give him like that second, third chance. But super good dude. He is taking over the car community by storm. Literally, he's gone viral so many fucking times. You call David Dobrik who? This guy's fucking crazy. (laughs) Mr. Beast who? This dude is, he's a good kid. He is from LA. He was born in Korea. And he is, again, like going to be probably the most emerging, biggest fucking car enthusiast YouTubers 
And uh, he is here right now in the Million Dollar Man Cave. My man, Alex Choi. What's good, dog? So honored to be here. I mean, the artwork here is freaking nuts. I'm so scared to like trip or <laughs> step on anything here. I'm just looking around and yeah, it's, I'm amazed. Oh man, it's good. I'm, to I'm not much here. of an artwork guy, but I mean, I, I've I've never been to a house with like so much hype beast stuff. <laughs> That's crazy. I haven't even gone to my fucking baseball cards. I thought that we just got into fucking or even cars. Oh god. Um. <laughs> so, bro, where were you born? Just like so I know exactly. I was born in uh, Asan Hospital, Seoul, Korea. Uh, oh, so you're in Seoul? Okay. Yeah. So uh, October 25th, right before the uh, century. Oh shit. 1999. Okay. Yeah. I always tell everyone I'm gonna live three centuries. Right, right. I live 101 years old. <laughs> when, when did you come to America? Uh, 2008. Oh, shit. Fourth, fourth grade. Fourth grade elementary school. I went to Curtis. Oh, you went to Curtis. Yeah. Okay. Did a year at Curtis. Um, ended up getting into a fist fight with Brooklyn Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say funny? He hit me up for a grill recently and I still haven't done it before. I feel bad. Really? Yeah. He's hit me up for a grill. But you know, uh, my neighbor, uh, their kids go to Curtis. That's funny. That's funny. So yeah, him and I have DM'd a few times. We're good now, but and 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 but it was just fourth grade. We were in the basketball court. Him and I got into a fist fight. Got each other suspended. And I didn't have the greatest reputation at Curtis. And then I got into Merman School, which is down the street. It's for it's for like it's like a talented school, like it's a school for the gifted. They, What's it called? Merman M I R M A N School. Oh, that's like the first time I've heard of every school. I've heard of that one. That's they crazy. share the lot with Berkeley Hall. It's like right oh, next okay. to Berkeley Hall. Okay, yeah. Okay. They do like extreme math and science. That's that's what they're. Did they're, you take SAT? I did. And what'd, you, I, what'd you get? I don't know. I, re- I don't remember the score. I, I, Fuck you. I did, I did shit though. Really, did, you didn't do good. No, no. I'm, I'm not. Was a it twenty four hundred or sixteen hundred when you took it? I don't even remember. I, I went to I went to college Chinchara a year. For a, come on, man. Yeah, seriously. no, it's dead ass. I don't remember. I tell okay. you if I did. I'm not proud of it either. But I, I tell you if I did. I'm not a test taker at all because my, my brain's always going crazy. I have. Did a, you understand English before you came to America or no? Yeah, I went, so I went to a preschool, uh, excuse me, I went to a kindergarten that taught English and spoke English only. And then I went to all Korean school, elementary school, up until about half of fourth grade. You know, that's rare, right? Even English and Korean. Like, that's why so many Koreans are going to the Philippines to learn English. So, so my mom always wanted to speak English and um, to, I always tried to, like, get this her, her goal in life was to be able to speak English fluently. So and she, she never could. She never could like learn English, right? So I think she looked at me and was like, okay, I'm going to make sure my kid knows English because I think that's one of the biggest things I regret not learning as a, as a kid. Do you have a brother or sister? Nope, I'm single. The only ch- single motherfucker, the only kid. Because <laughs> um, I'm the fucking, I'm the mangne, you know? So it's like a, it's oh, a okay. different thing. Um, for those who don't know what that means, if you're not Korean, fuck you. So <laughs> what, what, why did your parents move here? What, what was the purpose of them moving here? They just wanted some change, I guess. I don't know. Uh, business and personal and just lifestyle. What, what, what do your parents do? do they, the doctors? Or so, something? no. So my mom uh, founded Ticketlink. You know, you know, so you know how in America they have Ticketmaster? Right. So in Korea they have Ticketlink. Same, same concept. Okay. Uh, she started that and then she started a little like kids amusement park. Um, did that for like uh, when she was in her 20s all the way up to her, her 40s and then... Moved here. What about your dad? He'd just be chilling, just, just he'd, take, uh, so taking he, he, advantage uh, he of runs a, He runs a tech company called TechSphere. He, uh, they do like biometric hand scanners for like, uh, my dad's a computer engineer and he was a professor. Okay, so wh- where did the love of cars come in place? Like how did you fall in love with cars? So that's crazy because um, my mom, absolutely not into cars. My dad drives like a Hyundai that's 15 years old. <laughs> Nobody in my whole family gives a shit about cars. Um, my grandpa... My, my parents used to tell me were, was obsessed into cars, but um, by the time I was alive, I, like th- he he never had any of his cars. He never talked about his cars, and he died. He passed away when I was twelve, I think. I'm not sure of my exact age, but he he passed away when I was a little bit younger and before I was into cars at all. But anyways, when I was born, I was into trains. I think I feel like a lot of kids are into trains, yeah, and then I was into, and then I was into airplanes for a while. I still am. Airplanes are my my biggest passion. Um, by far, more than cars. That's what a lot of people don't know about me. Um, and then I got into motorcycles, and then and then I got into cars. I, I have no idea where it came from. I just started talking about cars. I remember in middle school, and they just really, really intrigued me. I remember my neighbor in Korea, because yeah. um, everyone lives in an apartment in Korea. So my apartment parking lot had an Audi R8, first generation Audi R8, and I thought it was the absolute freaking coolest thing that you can see the engine from the back of the car. And I feel like that's what kind of gave me the nick. And ever since. I've just 
You never saw a fucking bonnet on a Gallardo or a fucking Ferrari or something? I never... You, th you think those exist in Seoul? I mean, they do but for four times the price because of that, but... Yeah, yeah, true. I, I never... The only supercar I ever saw in Korea was my neighbor's R8. He ended up selling it a while later and get, getting a 458, and that was pretty cool, I mean, too. my my Hyung had a, probably every Ferrari after 1999, he had every Ferrari in... in like right in fucking in uh, Apujang right there. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. But no, um, I no, had no, the no. first. I had the first year. All right, that was my, one of my. Well, no, I'm talking about I had my first Ferrari in '04. Um, but yeah, the R8 was. I mean, especially for that time, bro. That was that was one of the very few cars where people completely accepted it right then and there. Like it, almost how Maserati that new MC20 is kind of like now. Is people are like, oh, the doors go up. It's kind of cool, but they're kind of like, uh, is it there? But like. The R8 immediately was just fucking. Crazy. Everyone hates. Everyone's hating on every new car that comes out recently. Yeah. <laughs> every time a car comes out, it's like, shit. I feel bad for the car company. So, so hold on. Airplanes. Have you ever been to Seattle before? You've been to Boeing before? No, never. Why? If you're into, I, I should. So my cousin works yeah. for Boeing. You know, I have a lot of t ties to Seattle. Obviously, I go to Seahawks games and everything. And my cousin was born and raised there. He died last year. Um, Boeing is like it's nuts when you fucking land at SeaTac when you're going over. You're like, what the fuck is going on with all you think? Like, it's the most crazy shit in the world, but it's all the jets. Like, Bezos got his shit there, but I'm saying, like, it's it's pretty sick. It's it's pretty crazy. That's pretty cool. I'm more into like the flying aspect of airplanes. Yeah, and I'm saying you, yeah. I'm sure you know more about planes than me. I, I don't really, you know, I have a jet, but I don't know like shit about it, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it's like fucking tiny, and, and plus it's a rental through my endorsement. I see, I see. Um, when did you first learn how to drive stick shift? <laughs> so fun fact, uh, in Monterey Car Week. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so the the first stick shift car I ever drove was an uh, uh, an aerial nomad. Do you know what those things are? Nah. It's like a hundred thousand dollar open wheel, pretty much a race car for the road. Oh, so like a a fucking uh, what the fuck's that shit called? The PAC or the fucking MAC? What the fuck is it? Or the back mono? Yeah, back, back, back yeah, mono. Like similar to that, but it's like a it's like a they're nomad. It's called it's like a jacked up off road version of the same thing. It's like a hundred grand. And it's like it's, a, it's like a rally car for the road. And it's manual. It's manual. And um, Why I would you up, want to fuck that clutch up, dude. I, I didn't actually. I didn't. So, I, I grew up riding motorcycles and motorcycles. Oh, okay. So yeah. look, at, if you you ain't got to say anything else. If you know how to ride a motorcycle, you understand the concept of a clutch, right? But I mean, they're both completely different, and I had no idea. I had no idea. So what what happened is I, I met this guy that runs the marketing at, at Aerial Nomad or at Aerial in general, and. He was like, "Yeah, come, uh, come test drive, come test drive the car. You're more than welcome to." And I was 17 or 18 years old at that point. I've never driven a stick shift car ever, and I'm like, "Stick shift, okay, whatever. It's it has to be the same as motorcycle." I'm a very experienced motorcycle rider, so I show up and I stall the car like six times. And the guy, <laughs> the guy, the guy's like, "I get, I finally get it down the road," and I'm being so freaking rough with the clutch that the I see the guy next to me and he's like scared shit, shitless. And he doesn't know what to do. And he's like, okay, you can make a U-turn now and go back. I made a U-turn in a freaking hill. Terrible, terrible, terrible mistake. I ended up making a, a, on a one-way road, <laughs> in a one-lane uh, one lane canyon road on a hill. I flipped a U-turn and then drove the car into a ditch and couldn't back it out. So with a bunch of traffic watching, Guy and I at the switch, he got back in the car and pulled, put it in reverse. How, how did you end up learning how to drive, drive for real though? Like you didn't... That you weren't driving that for the next fucking two, three months, I'm saying. What no, did you... so my parents got me an M2 for like one of my first cars. And, and Did you have the M2 before the, the Huracan? Oh, way before, yeah. Oh, that, I didn't know that. I got, okay. I got my M2 when I was 16. How old are you now? 22. Damn, Alex, you're 22? Yeah, I'm old. When did you have that, that crazy rap on your car? I remember seeing you around before that, but when did you get that crazy like cartoon rap, that camo shit with all the little fucking the, crazy... The baby Milo. Yeah. Rap. Oh. Uh, 2018. That was when I was 18, so... 40 years ago. Okay. Yeah. So you say very experienced motorcycle rider. You know anything about my motorcycle history or no? No idea. I didn't even know you knew, knew how to. So I raced motorcycles for a very long time. Oh, like, okay. Like my motorcycle driving skills are probably 10 times better than my car skills and I'm elite. I've driven 160 on the 101 in the pouring rain. Like where people are like, yo, dog, you want to die. That's a death wish. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm talking, bro, I've done 100 mile per hour wheelie for almost four miles long. Like just doing just silly shit. Like, I was part of, you know, the most notorious bike gang in all of LA. We're still around. We're still, you know, but it's just, I think once my, I had, I had a kid, I just couldn't do it anymore. You know, I've been down, I don't know, three, four times. I've lost maybe eight close friends. Like we got busy, bro. Like I'm talking. Yeah. That's the you know, thing about like, being in the motorcycle community is everybody yeah. just dies. All you go is funerals. It's like, yeah. I mean, I literally, it was crazy going to funerals all the time. And then the crazy part is, um, 
my wife was friends with Nikki Hayden. My wife used to be, oh. you know, Red Cup girl, so it was like crazy. And like, you know, he passed away on bicycle of all things. But like, you know, like Rossi and all these other people, like Michael Jordan used to ride bikes. Was like, I was real big in bikes, bro. Since I was like seven years old, being in the hood, even just burning on dirt bikes. So that's crazy that you, because I saw you got a Ducati. I have two. You got two Ducatis. A Monster and a Panigale. Okay, I saw the Panigale, which both suck. Well, I'm just not. I'm <laughs> not. A, I'm not a V twin fan. Period. Yeah, they suck. But. I was laughing. I was like, oh shit, this fool could pop one on, on one wheel. I was like, okay. Are you are you clutching it or powering it? Clutching it. Okay. More consistent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At least you understand that. Yeah. On a dirt bike, you ain't gotta worry about that shit. It's just like, you know, it's, it's like, but you know, these you ever seen stunt riders, like real stunt riders? Because my one of my best friends, he's still in it. But he's he went when I'm talking about, I introduced it to him in like 2004. He went and lost his mind. Like he got the hundred tooth sprocket, like he's you know, the fucking you know, the, the rear brake on the front, like yeah, yeah. Everything you could think of. He's nuts. I don't know anything about stunt riding. To be okay, honest. well that was a whole different yeah. level and like where like you gotta remember you could have the sickest bike in the world and it won't go over sixty miles per hour because you yeah, have a hundred tooth sprocket. Geared so low, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, in fourth or fifth gear. Fourth or fifth gear, bro. Imagine just going fourth or fifth gear, right? Yeah. And just going poof, and it'll just power up. What are you going at that point? Like forty miles an hour in fifth gear? <laughs> In fifth gear, you're probably going about 40, 45, yeah. But I mean, that means you could literally power it up, you know, bounce it up just because it's so much torque. You know, it's like, and remember, in first gear, forget about it. There's no reason to have first gear. You just start the bike in second gear, you know, just literally. <laughs> like, you don't clutch and go down. You just go up, you know, like it's so fucked up. I, I had no idea they're geared solo. I, I want to try riding one one day. <laughs> Crazy, man. Okay, I didn't know. That motorcycle thing just gave me a whole different level of respect for you. I used so, to have an Instagram too called uh, R, Mr. R1. <laughs> Really? Yeah, when I was 16. Did you 17. have an R1? Yeah, I still have it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I had an R1 too. That's crazy. Yeah, it's my favorite favorite bike ever. You know what's funny is I used to hate, hate on the R1s, and I hated and talked mad shit about people at R1s, because it was like when they first came out, it was 04, like the new, like that sick, you know what I'm saying? That fucking crazy R1. When it first came out, people were like, oh shit, this thing is fucking the shit. And I was hating on it. I was like, man, fuck this bitch ass bike, because I was always Suzuki. You know, have you noticed when people are about bikes, they're really one thing. Yeah. They're not Honda. They're like, they're Honda, they're Honda. Yeah. Suzuki, they're Suzuki. Kawasaki, they're Kawasaki. Yeah, exactly. So like, there goes my R1 on my Hayabusa. Sick. And you see like, my shit was they're stupid, They're the best bro. sounding bikes, leader bikes, in my opinion. R1. I mean, bro, all my shit planes. had, dude, all my shit had, had fucking um, straight pipes and everything. You know what I'm saying? So that's crazy, bro. I don't know if you saw, I was back in my V-twin days. I had fucking every kind of, MV Agustas. I had all kinds of crazy bikes, bro. So, you know how to fly a helicopter, and I know we were supposed to do this a long time ago. No, I just started learning how to. It's it's. So when you're just co-piloting, is that what happens? Yeah, yeah. I'm not licensed to fly a helicopter. So how the fuck are we gonna go? You told me you'll take me. Anytime. Oh, I go with my instructor. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so question: when You really we, would trust me? Yeah, fuck it. What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> All right, dog. I'm crazy, bro. You don't know anybody crazy than me. Have I mean you've flown one, right? Like where he sits there and be like, "All right, if you fuck up, I'm gonna take over." He's let me fly one, like. With so much control to the point where he even let me almost crash land one. <laughs> like he, m uh, my friend instructor, he trusts me. He he has too much trust. I was with a uh, in a, a packed in a little Robinson R44 with three other big dudes, and coming into land, I pulled the collective up and I couldn't. I was pulling so much power already. I pretty much didn't maneuver the helicopter right, and then went down at like you know three four feet per second onto the skids. Oh. Well, bam. Could you land on top of um, one of the high rises in downtown LA, you think, or no? Not fully loaded, no. He could all day long, right? No, 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 no. Helicopters can fly straight, like an airplane, if they're fully loaded, but the problem is hovering. Hovering takes a lot of power. So what I'm saying is, can your instructor, you think he can land on one of those roofs? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, has, he flies with so much precision. You ever see those helicopters where, like... The dude's a construction worker sits on the skids of it and like works on power lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. those guys are like snipers. Okay, so yeah. your instructor, so he'd be taking us up in the hills. Correct. He'll take us up all through Hollywood Hills. You can see all the houses and shit. He's fucking crazy too. Have you seen how, dude, I've only seen it in pictures through like my boy paid to shoot Johnny. Yeah. Like he'll fucking shoot over fucking Bel Air. I'm like, God damn, this is insane. I mean, my instructor will like. Have you gone you over know, all the houses in Bel Air? For the, for the sake of his pilot's license, for the rest of this podcast, I'm not going to say his name, but this motherfucker turns off the transponder so nobody can track him. Like, it'll, he'll only be tracked on, like, military. Actually, if you're below the canyons, you won't, you won't be tracked on any radar. Right. And starts fucking buzzing people, like, flying, like, 
freaking like 30, 40 feet above these mansions. Oh my God, he flies like but has, a But so you've been maniac. over those Beller houses then? Oh yeah. Oh, dude, I gotta go with you, bro. This guy flies like a fucking maniac. Do you know how to, uh, do you know how to ride a boat? Do you know how to drive a boat? I mean, I've rented one before, but no, no. No, I mean like one of them fucking cigarette race, like them crazy Bobby. I don't no, know. No, no, no. I wouldn't even know how to get one started. No, you know how to no. do it? No, no, no. How about an airplane? Can you fly a plane? Yes. I, fly, I flew my first plane when I was 13. What the fuck, bro? How many hours do you have on a plane? Uh, not a lot. Two, like 200 now. Do you have a pilot license? So I'm ready to get one. And f- I finished all my training like four years ago. And um, I went to college and I never took my test. So all I have to do is literally hit up my, hit up my instructor, have him sign it off, go take my test, and I'm done. But I've just been too so lazy. So technically, if me and you got in a plane, let's, I'm trying to think of somewhere quick, Fresno. It's like 20 minutes on, on a, no, maybe 30. Could you get us a Fres- Fresno and a Cessna? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm very fluent in a Cessna. Oh, nice. Yeah. You know, it's funny is I was like, my boy had this jet. He's flying everywhere. I'm like, what the fuck? When I finally saw what it looked like, and I was like, bro, that's your jet? He's like, why you got to talk shit, fool? I don't see you getting no jet, blah, blah, whatever. And I was like, all right, dog, whatever. Then when I looked, I was like, 230,000. I'm like, bro, this is a job. Are you kidding me? And I realized, you got a bathroom? He goes, ain't no fucking bathroom. Ain't no Wi-Fi in here, dog. This, it's literally a fucking Cessna. You know, it's like a, but it was like, I seen some cool planes for like four or 500K. And I was like, yo, everyone's like, man, don't buy one, dog. It's the worst thing you'll ever do in your life, blah, blah. I mean, if you charter it out, right, it's a good like, you know, investment. But I mean, for me though, like everyone has a niche in their little thing. And for me, like whenever I walk by those jets at the airport, like they just, to me, they're just buses. Like, I'll walk by all the Gulf Streams, all the multi-million dollar Falcons and like not even take a look at them. But then like if I see some dudes like tricked out Cessna, I'll be like, holy shit, that's so cool. Nah, bro, you got to see Drake's jet. It is literally, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. It changed my friendship with him. The 757? Yeah, it changed my friendship with him. Like it, it changed me. Like I don't feel even right. that I've known this guy since he was broke. I've helped him with so many things. He's, dude, you gotta understand, Drake has stopped a sold out show in 2017, like the end of his tour, stopped the show in LA. There's 50, 60, 70,000 people there. Stops the show to do a three minute dedication. You know how long three minutes is? Hey, Ben, I appreciate everything you've done for me, blah, blah. And people in the audience probably are like, I saw like celebrities there and like big influencers had like five, six million followers that kind of like all knew. I've been the same person for the last 20 years. People were looking at me like, I'd be in tears if that I had happened. no <laughs> idea. And it was, it meant a lot to me. When the jet came, I couldn't be friends with him anymore. Like it was like he just, is beyond a different level. People are like, oh, you get a Bugatti. I want to know this. the story behind, like, does he actually 100% outright that own that thing? Because you know how much money it is to freaking own and maintain a 757? Holy fuck. Do, do you know? Take a guess at what you think that, that shit costs. Okay, what do you think it costs for, because he goes to the Caribbean a lot. What do you think it costs from LA to Caribbean? What do you think it costs round trip just to go there? How, how many hours is it to Caribbean? Eight, nine hours. Just, just take a wild guess. At least 100 grand. <laughs> Bro, it's hundred grand to go to fucking Texas, dog. That yeah, thing. yeah. This is 757, bro. This ain't exactly. no fucking... Exactly, I know. What do you think that mother... That, that bitch is over almost a million probably round trip, dog. It's no joke. It's... See, bro, you don't understand. When you go inside, it's nicer than this house. This ain't no cheap house, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's... It's serious. He had a Bugatti. Didn't really drive really good. Great. He has, he has cars here and there. He just, dog, he never gets to drive by himself. We were going to go to a Ferrari meet in Westlake. There was like this Ferrari meet they do once in a while. And it was like... It was just weird, bro. He always has someone around now. So it's like, you know. I saw him out driving once with like five other freaking Suburbans or Escalades and tried chasing after him and one of the security guards almost ran me over. Yeah, no, hey, his security is probably the best. I've I've dealt with all kinds of keys, the best security I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, they don't fuck around. What's the fastest you've ever gone in a car, you driving on a public highway? 217. Public highway? 214. 214, yes. I haven't done 214. In, in In Nevada. Oh, in Nevada. Yeah. On that same road, they did that stupid ass fucking Koenigsegg, test. Yeah. And then, and then no, I no, was, not that. What was it the SSR or whatever? Remember the? Is yeah, yeah, yeah. The remember, same, there, remember there was like a fucking discrepancy with that. Yeah, with that. Yeah. You saw that shit, right? It was broken down pretty good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Shmi. <laughs> Koenigsegg so you, did the Koenigsegg did the same test run on that road. They did what two forty four, two thirty four, or something. I don't know. Some two seventy something. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. The two seventy seven. That road is so nice. I went to. Two, I've never been on it. Oh my god! I went to two fourteen. In what car? In the seven twenty. Okay. And then I slowed down. Then I went to two fourteen again. Then I slowed down. It's that long? Oh my god! And I was like, okay, you know what? Let me get this on video. So w- w- one hand on the wheel, I was holding my phone, and I went to two fourteen, slowed down, and I'm like, okay, wait. I was with Amelia at the point. I was like, Amelia, grab grab the vlog camera. Let's record this. Then I went to two fourteen again, four times on the same straightaway. It's so beautiful. How long do you think it took to get 214? Like 25 seconds? What, 30 seconds? I don't know. 
720. It's a stock 720, however long it takes. A stock 720. Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just yeah. curious. Yeah. Did you, have the, you didn't have the AC on going 214, did you? No, I did. So on, on McLaren's, for some reason, when you floor like that, the insulation is pretty bad. It's a really thin sheet. Of, like, it's like a little bed sheet. Really so, bad, dude. Really bad. So whenever you floor a McLaren, you feel all the engine heat. It's terrible. Bro, you, do you have any... Do you, you think it's bad in there? Bro, good in Senna. Exactly. Dude, the P1 is nothing could be about The Senna is... There is no car that is really a real race car like that. That's a race car at the license plate, bro. It's fucking... It's insane. There ain't like no... It, I almost totaled it that night that I saw you at fucking Osaka. Yeah, Outlaw, you told bro. me. No. It's fucking crazy, man. So um, what is currently in your stable? Because I, I didn't know... You know, you, I, I just... I was like, oh, he got this. Oh, he got this. Oh, shit. He has a Model 3. I didn't actually know about all those... You know, all the cars. So what do you currently have? In the state, the supercars is my Huracan in the 720. Um, I and I, I have, here, I have a hard time selling cars because I grow like a sentimental value with them. I work on them too much. Um, and then I, I and then I just end up having trouble. I mean, you've them go. destroyed that 720 to the point where I'm like, Jesus Christ, I feel bad for the car. You show me the fucking thing with the wallet. I didn't even know there's a fucking pocket on the door there. Like, you had that pocket, whatever, yeah, where you're trying to break it. I mean, the build quality of that car is the, the fucking atrocious. It's a Honda. It's oh, what are you talking? Hondas are great. Oh man, Hondas are. Pretty. They're okay, built so, right. so you have a 720 and you have your Huracan. Yeah. Which you've done all kinds of crazy shit to both right. of them. Right, right. All right. And then I have the BMW M2, my first car. I still have it. How many miles are on that car? The M2. Not a lot, like 30,000. Considering how long I've had that car, I, I shipped that car to the East Coast too. Drove it around in the winter with summer tires. Best, worst decision ever. All right. Um, that's the car I drove in the East Coast. Um, I have the Plaid. Right. Tesla. I bought this like $20,000 Caprice. Chevy Caprice police patrol vehicle. Why? You ever drive a police car around? Yeah, LA? I have. Just to fuck with people? You get the right of way yeah. no matter what. It's crazy. You get the right of way absolutely every You got to get an Explorer now, do it black and white to see, you know, so it's really like, you know what I'm saying? It's well, more look, so the Caprice had an LS2 in it, so I want to put a Pro Charger kit on it and make oh, it okay, go yeah. freaking fast. Dog, I used to have a 96 Impala, the LS2, same motor, pretty yeah, much. So. Yeah. Well, nicer motor. Okay, so you have the Matt. You got a Model 3 too, though, right? It's my mom's now. My mom uses it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You have R six. R six. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that oh, was. Then I have the Fiat. The Fiat. I, uh, do you know the story behind the Fiat? No. I see. I seen a picture of it, and I was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Like, you, you want to know the story behind the Fiat? Story, dude. So I was on Gold Rush Rally, a rally from like New York to Vegas, or I don't know where. It was, it's a cross country rally. Seven twenty is such a piece of shit. I did a top speed run. I was going like two ten. I remember watching this, but go on. And, yeah. And the fucking alternator went out. So I went to AutoZone by like, and if you go to AutoZone, they have these car batteries and they leave them fully charged. Yeah, yeah. So I bought like seven of them and they were spending $1,200 in car batteries. And I'm like, and I made it like another 200 miles, but I still had another like three, 400 miles left on the trip. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to spend another fucking $2,000 on car batteries. This is ridiculous. So I called the tow company to get it shipped home, which is the biggest fucking nightmare in the world. The tow company ended up holding a fucking hostage too, which is... Another story in and, of, in and of itself. And right where I broke down, I just looked up cars for sale. And the nearest car dealership, I, I went through their inventory and they had a little Fiat 500 of Barth. And I'm like, okay, great, perfect. And I was, was fucking 12 smoking. Grand? 13 and a half. I was smoking everyone on the rally and that thing. I was, that car is so tiny. I can just split lanes in it. Oh, yeah. I was just, I was yeah. smoking everybody in that rally. It was so fucking funny. Bro, have you ever seen a Lotus uh, Elon uh, on the street before or no? Mm -mm. Okay, you know, it's a little small, little tiny Lotus. The Exige? No, the Elon, E L O N. Oh, I don't even know. You don't that remember is. that? It's, no. it's, it's, it was the car for the canyons that everyone was driving from like 2005, 2004, 2006, around there, until like 2010, maybe. Is it? No, it wasn't the Elise. I'm sorry. It was, it was the, yeah, it was the Elon. Anyways, it's like the little fucking yeah. bullshit fucking Lotus. One of those things, yeah. Bro. You had one? No. My cousin did. And I was up there. I had an M5, I had an E60, fucking, you know, crazy horsepower. I had all kinds of shit. I had everything you could get done to it. I even had cams, everything. This motherfucker was making me look silly, bro. He was out there slapping, like, bro, he was slapping GT3s around back then. It was really impossible to get him. And I started realizing, oh, shit, you get these little whippersnappers, you know, it's, 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 it's fucking over. So, oh, you know what? Let me ask you a question, man. The RS6 is something I almost bought three, four times. And then I just said, you know what? A buddy of mine, he had a really nice one. He had all done up. It was super clean. And he was just like, yo, bro, there was so much hype on this car. This car, they're talking about that car in 04. You know that, right? RS6, like coming mm -hmm. to America, mm -hmm. boom. Finally, it's here. And my boy, he's had GT3. He's had some Ferraris here and there. And he said, like, this is the most overrated car I've ever owned, dog. I'm so fucking Rob. disappointed. No. 
I can see why anyone would say that it's it's a pretty boring car, but it's it's not it's 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 a pretty boring car. But for me, it was the looks, the sound. No, for sure, the rear seat. Like I I drive all my homies around all the time. My boy got an E sixty three S way better car wagon, and he was like, "Yo, it's not even it's night and day." He said, "Fucking the car looks E sixty three. I'm sorry, the car looks retarded, but I mean, it's a great, it's a much better car." He had the 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 model before. It was like the 2019 or 20. It looked pretty sick. Those things look better than the new one. The new ones look like freaking cameras. It it look it looks good, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, and it's fucking fat. And that motherfucker sounds mean as shit, bro. Like the new one looks like 2015 Siennas. I'm sorry, I I, I can't, I can't (laughs) with the, I can't with the new E 63s. All right, so how does a 22 year old afford five, six cars? Parents. I mean, I started making a ton of money on YouTube, but this is a business. How, how, this, this is a business show. What, what's the, what's a ton the of money? Investment, investment came from parents. I know, but, but I'm saying, what's a ton of money? Because this, you know, I've I've had billionaires. On this. You know, I've, I've had people come on here and talk about you know certain things. Like right now, you're starting to generate mm-hmm. millions of views on on all your. Every time on, I post a video, it's about ten grand. Okay, and how many videos do you post? Like five, ten, ten times a month, or four times a month? And okay. and and then you have merch. I haven't started yet, but I'm just saying there's potential. Right. Um, to sell merch. And then yeah, so many people buy merch. And There's then, these kids that my, my kids follow. Uh-huh. They idolize them. Um, I'm part of FaZe Clan, right? So I've been in FaZe for, holy shit, five years now I've been a member of FaZe Clan now, right? Right. And even those guys are making tons of money, but they know all the YouTubers and stuff. And so if, if I needed like a video, shout out to my son, they do it. There's a kid named Flamingo uh-huh. who my kids idolize, right? This guy's just a whatever dude, whatever. And he's, I don't know how the fuck he has fans so young, but he kills it. Like, crushes it he you know he's i mean i can't imagine this guy having a big lifestyle but probably probably makes like seven eight million dollars a year and he's just like how old is he he, dude he might be a a year or two older than you maybe or a year older than you i know like 13 year old kids that make seven figures a month (laughs) well no i mean life of ryan i mean i mean ryan you know what i'm saying like the little kid ryan's world yeah yeah. he was the highest paid ever crazy and you know i like i was trying to set up a play date and whatever boom and then like Found out some stuff about his parents. They got arrested for shoplifting when they were younger and all this crazy shit and all this stuff. Really? And then they have two new kids now, so they're trying to develop them into it. But what fucking 13-year-old is making money right now? I'm just, like, there's so many, like, kids on YouTube, I'm just saying. And I, and I watch their shit, and I, and I see how many views they get. I see how many clicks they get, and I'm just assuming. Like, this is... What do you think Mr. Beast makes a year? 20? At least. He's one of the highest paid... YouTubers. I mean, oh, okay. yeah, he's one. Of, and if Jake Paul's net worth is like forty million, then I don't know if Jake Paul's net worth is really that though. There's a lot of cap behind that. I'm sure there. I, is. I'm gonna keep it one hundred with you. Yeah, I got no problem with Jake or anything. I'm just saying, yeah. there's guys definitely bigger than him. He just is loud. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's a different thing. So I used um, to talk to him, but he's too cool for me now. I talk to him. I don't, yeah. like, I don't want. I don't want to talk to him. Um. So, uh, parents. They're they're real generous. They're very cool. They're just pretty chill. What do they think about all this fucking car shit? Like, what's their opinion on it? So, I mean, my my dad's like, kind of a whatever. He thinks it's cool, and then he just doesn't. At the same time, like, if I do stupid shit, there he's gonna be like, the fuck. <laughs> my mom has always been a what the fuck. I I, I convinced her into buying me the M2 because I was like, okay, it's a small little, good beginner's car. Totally not. You should never buy your <laughs> kid anything rear wheel drive right. with that much horsepower. Um. And then, and then I kind of started turning into business, and they're like, "Okay, you know, I can support it, but I still don't support the stupid shit." Okay, so your parent, your parents are cool with that. That that's pretty cool. They, they, yeah, they're they're cool with the they're very cool with the YouTubing and all that. Okay, so yeah. I mean, you're, so you're generating money now at least, which is smart. You you right. figured out a way to make money, and this is what you want to do. Right. If you had a kid later in life, I'm saying, you know, if you had a son, you mm-hmm. know, because you never know, you could have five daughters, you never know, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always ask this question when I was like your age, and then when I was like in my 30s. And then now, even when I first had my kid, I was like, you know what? I'm definitely gonna get my kid a Ferrari. Fuck that. I want him to stunt. And then I thought about it like, yo, that 16-year-old kid that killed that girl in the in the Urus, yeah. remember? And then there's other shit. And you think about how they really don't understand the power. And then Shaquille O'Neal, he cussed me out. We've been friends for like 30 years. Cussed me the fuck out. I was like, motherfucker, when I see him, fuck you up. And he wasn't joking. I let his son borrow my Hellcat. <laughs> and I wasn't thinking it was a big deal. You know, he's 20 years old. And he goes, you know what kind of power's on there? Blah, blah. I was like, dog, he's fine. Like, but it was a problem with him, you know. Um, I tell my kids, I'll buy you anything you want as long as it's front-wheel drive. That's not necessarily... I mean, bro, the NSXs are front-wheel drive. I'm just saying, like, what would you get your kid, honestly? I mean, your son? If, if they were not car people, then nothing but a fucking Tesla. <laughs> I can track him. I can limit their speed. I can put their... Can you limit the speed from... The, from, from... Yeah, from the phone. 
You can limit it to 80 miles an hour. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah. So no like 130 mile an hour bullshit happens. You know, I didn't realize how fast the Model 3 performance was until... Oh, they're fast. He was... This dude was racing an M5. And M5 was having a really hard time, yeah. like, losing him. <laughs> it was like... I was shocked. The 3 is probably faster than M5. I didn't know that. But yeah. they were like... They were, he, was, he was like on his tail. Like, he almost rear-ended him. I was like, yo, what's going on over here? I'm scared of racing Teslas. You'd never know if this is a standard range or a performance. <laughs> ah, it's fucking crazy, bro. What is your absolute holy grail car like what's the end all like one car right now i'd be like yo that's it tesla roadster if it ever comes out come on bro get the fuck out. bro what's wrong are you I love serious Teslas. are you serious bro yeah, they go they fly i have probably either somewhere between one two three or four or five the roadster when it comes it definitely it's going to be one of those unless right. you cancel it because you're fucking stupid ass shenanigans that i decided to partake in which i fucking regret now <laughs> and um no i'm being serious though so that's out right now I've always been a huge fan of the P1. Like, I, 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 th- I think I'd love a P1. I've, I got in a ride in one. and Okay, so you've been nuts. in one. Yes. I did a rally in one. <laughs> so you, you, how, how many, how, you've gotten taller in the last five years, wouldn't you say? No. You've always been the same height? I fixed my posture. Oh, yeah. that's what, it, you know, if I fix my posture, I'm an inch taller. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I started going to the gym and that made me taller. But that's just because my posture got fixed from doing back workouts. You actually shit. have really bad. I remember you had bad back earlier. You yeah. talked about oh, it. Yeah. So how tall are you with, with without like you know wearing your shoes on? With my shoes on? Yeah. A five ten. Yeah. Because I, I was like, I was like, shit, fucking Alice got bigger. Anyways, I think five ten is the maximum for P one. When I'm yeah. when I'm sitting straight yeah. up, you know, I'm six legit and everything. I, I I didn't realize how cramped I was. I'm a little cramped in the center, but the P one, I'm cramped. That's why I kind of never know, really bought one. I'm five foot four when I'm hunched over. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess, man. All right, man. Speaking of Teslas, bro, I wasn't really going to address the situation, but you're like, oh, we got a lot to talk about. Fuck it. You know, you've done a lot of crazy shit. You've done viral videos. You've put little fucking cages on the fucking Huracan. You've done this, that, and the third. You've done little things. I'm not really too aware of, of anything like, I mean, I've seen you pull some shit like we had, you know, a model on, on, on the back of your Huracan, like fucking with a teddy bear. I don't know. That's a different picture. But I've, I remember seeing like girls drive on the car, boom, whatever. You figured out things. yeah. Let's talk about what happened the other night, bro. What the fuck? It was the worst day of my life and also the craziest day of my life. Okay. But this is the first Tesla rally, right? First ever Tesla rally. It did it for shits and giggles. Gave everyone a 12-hour notice. I posted at noon. Oh, no. Excuse me. I posted at 9 p.m. And I told her 9 a.m. Told everyone to show up at 9 p.m. No, you, you texted me at least a little bit before that. But. Oh, I, I gave my homies a heads yeah. up. I gave my homies a heads <laughs> up. But but as far as the public goes, I gave, I gave them a 12-hour heads up. And I think... Oh, exactly 45 people showed up because I printed out 45 route cards and they were all taken. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty good. It was pretty, very, very good. I was so surprised. I thought, I thought here's what I thought was going to happen. It was going to be 15 Teslas and I was going to have to sit there and kick out 65 fucking BMW fuckboys. Right. But no, it was just test owners. I'm very so surprised. No, so no fuck, no fuck no, asses and I'm AMGs so and BMWs. Okay. Very, very surprised. None of them showed up. And I saw like, Motherfuckers had lights on their cars and shit, like all kinds of like oh my God. fucking people, pink. I was like, what the fuck? People spend another whole Model 3 on top of their Model 3. <laughs> Dude, I saw a Model 3. I know it wasn't there, but I saw a Model 3 wrapped clean. This motherfucker had a full 100% body kit. I'm talking side skirts, oh. rear diffuser, front spoiler, l- l- uh, roof low lift. If it's the same motherfucker we're talking about, the dude has a starlight in his front trunk. I don't know. It was fucking beautiful, you know, though. You know the Rolls Royce starlight? Yeah. He has that for his in the trunk, trunk for his luggage, so his luggage gets starlight. You can't really put anything in there, though. Yeah, I don't think you can fit even a fucking a, a carry on a suitcase in the in the front. Can you? You can just barely. But the dude had a, fr- a starlight on the front bonnet of his Tesla. Like if you close it, nobody's gonna see it. Okay, so <laughs> explain to the people. Um, you know the superchargers are there. Um, I talked about it a little bit on the last episode. Um, okay, so you know, dead ass. The rally was over. The rally was fine. Yeah, and. We cut the cut to rally short because it started raining, and I was going because we we're going to do a canyon run. It's from Hawthorne, the the SpaceX supercharger, right, to Malibu Country Mart supercharger, and then we're going to drive up to the Gore Hill supercharger. But I had to cancel that part because it was raining and my tires are bald. And so I was going to my favorite trauma place down in Anaheim from Malibu. I love trauma, and you were going to go all the way to Anaheim from Malibu. Yeah. Okay. I don't mind the drive. All right. I love driving and I love trauma. So, <laughs> so. One of my friends there was friends with this guy. Okay. And he was like, yo, this guy does crazy shit. <laughs> and he shows up next to me 
while I'm sitting in my car, he goes, hey, bro, you know you know the place where David Dobrik jumped his car? You want to go check it out? And I'm like, wait, what? So my friend in the car, in my car, pulled the video. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I've always wanted to see where that is. So me and like three other, three, four other car, Teslas, like my homies that were in other Teslas, we all just drove there. So you, you, you canceled Anaheim? No, no, we were on the way to Anaheim. I'm like, because it was, it was from Malibu to Echo Park to Anaheim. So it was kind of on the way. It's not, but okay. And it's a triangle. It's a, it's a lightning bolt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hold on, wait a second. So you end up going to Anaheim anyway after? Yeah, still okay. there. Yeah. Wait a second, what the fuck? What, what time does the shawarma place close? 3 a.m. I can't believe they even, I can't believe shawarma in Anaheim of all fucking places, bro. Like I'm friends with a lot of Lebanese people, Middle East. I'd never heard of no fucking place open until three, except like in Westwood. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> so okay. good. What time did you call me? You know, I'm gonna check my phone. Hold on, I'm gonna <laughs> check to see what time. Let me see this motherfucker. I called you to, to tell you to look at the news. This motherfucker called me at two twenty four in the morning. Okay, so what time did you guys get to Baxter and Alvarado? Midnight. Okay, a little after midnight. I don't know the exact time. I'm, I'm sure. Bro, Silver Lake is still. I mean, people say Echo Park, but remember when you said, "Oh, it's Echo Park." I'm like, bro, I showed you the address of my house. Yeah, three minutes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like right there. It's left like it's literally like a bordering city. You know what I'm saying? I've always considered it Silver Lake anyway, even though technically it's Echo Park. But I've always even people say, "Oh, well, it is." Shut the fuck up, bitch, motherfucker. You want to live there? Fuck you. You know, I'm literally fucking a th- stone's throw. <laughs> it's actually busy in that area. Really? Yeah, it's like, it's like, so midnight. I'm not, I'm, I've probably only been there like five times. So you didn't really see anybody. It's not that far from the Fast and Furious house. It's like maybe six minutes from fucking. Oh, really? You've taken a picture from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you get there. So I get there and this dude's coming up from the other side of the street because we all get lost. And he sent my friend's friend's friend a fucking pin to the place. So I show up there and I get out of the car and across the street, I, th- I see the dude hitting a blunt. He hits a blunt. <laughs> Chucks the blunt out the window, sees that I'm there, or I don't know if he saw that I'm there or not, and then just fucking floors it down this hill. Me and him had no communication, zero communication. And I get out. I'm like, okay, this is this is happening. This guy didn't do any test runs. That's what I was going to ask you. So yeah. do you think before you got there, he decided to fuck around a little bit or no? No, I, I saw him get there at the same time I got there. Oh, so he didn't even have time to do a run or nothing just he for stroking. He had no idea if there, how many parked cars were on the other side of it. Yeah, he had no idea. I mean, I'm sure he's been there before, but like, he had no idea if there was cars parked all on the street or there was none. He didn't even take a look. Drove down to the other side of the street. Everyone kind of at this point knows what the fuck's about to happen. But I saw David Dobrik's video like 30 minutes before because I, I saw it on the way there. And... That was pretty crazy. I was like, yeah, that David Dobrik's video. I'm Wasn't like, it a Model Y? Model X. White Model X. Okay, and how much air did it get? Probably like f- four or five feet. But that's a lot. Actually. That's a lot for a fucking car. Was it a P90? What, P100? Was it P100D, a- yeah. Okay, so it had to be, okay, so he's a ludicrous mode the whole nine. Probably, but... But he probably, I'm sure he planned it, cleared things out, whatever. I'm sure he did. And, and he, I'm actually friends with the guy that was driving that Model X at the time. Okay. And... Yeah, I talked to him, and he was like, yeah, I went, up, I went about 50 miles an hour. Why only 50? I don't know. That's what he said. He said he went 57. That's what I remember. I don't know where he got that number from, but he said he went 50, 57 miles an hour. He could have easily, from the bottom of that hill, he could have easily got to 80 or 90 in a P100D. I mean, you see, that hill is like a 30, 40% grade. It you is, bro, I've, I, I, I could barely I've, even I've, walk down it. I've scraped in my Range Rover on that hill. I've scraped. Yeah. I remember thinking there's no fucking way when I have my six because when I live in that house I have my six ninety five LT. Uh-huh. It wouldn't even go up the hill, even yeah. with the, the lifter on and everything. It just wasn't gonna. I, my tires are bald, and I my Tesla was spinning tires all the way going up the hill. Okay, so continue. Yeah, so he turns around and then starts f- sitting there flashing his high beams, telling everyone to get the fuck out of the way. So I look back. I start pulling my phone out. I knew something crazy was about to happen, so I put my phone in airplane mode because I hate it when I get a phone call in the middle of recording something. I put my phone in airplane mode. Smart. And I'm like, everybody, get the fuck back. Get the fuck back right now. But in my mind, I had no idea that he was going to do anything more than David Dobrik ever did because that was crazy. And I'm like, okay, well, this guy's probably going to do half that, if anything, or even a test run. 
He sailed it, <laughs> bro. He sailed that car. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good at estimating shit. He was going over 70, 100%, bro. So, okay. So, right after the crash, I asked one of his friends. And I'm like, yo, how fast were you guys going? And he's like, well, we went 57 because somebody here told me. To. Apparently, somebody there called Dave Dobrik and asked Dave Dobrik how fast the car was going. I wasn't there for that. And they got a quote of 57 miles an hour. He wasn't on 57. And, and so one of his friends that was in that flying Tesla gets out of the car and goes, well, somebody told us to go 57. So he went 57. <laughs> go on, listen. And then floored it even more. I'm like, why would you go even faster than that? And he's like, I don't know. Trust me, bro. They were going like 70 or something. I, I, yeah, I know always, speeds. I, I was telling everyone he was going 80. Yeah. And I know speeds. He had a fucking cat in there. He had a cat? You didn't know this? Someone said something about that. But... Bro, there was a cat in there. What the fuck was a cat doing in there? Apparently, the story is, I can't confirm this, but he found a stray cat at the beginning of my Tesla meet. And he just took it. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> oh my For God, For all bro. I know, that could have been someone else's cat that lives near the supercharger. Oh my God, dude. Jesus I Christ. saw the fucking cat walk out. I'm like, are you fucking joking me right but now? But the homie said that as soon as he landed, right? He just yeah. fucking started bouncing, right? He just ran. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did he jump into an Uber? Did he jump into a fucking thing? Just, so just, there's like, a video that surfaced of him jumping into another Tesla that was there. Okay. He asked me to get in my car. I'm like, first of all, my car is full. Yeah, dude. And two, I would have told two, him. Anyway. I'm like, I don't want to be part of this. I don't want to be yeah. part of your crime. How bad did he crash into that Subaru? Okay, so when I was first there, yeah. it was pitch black and raining. I only saw the back of the Subaru. Yeah. And it was like a little nick in the bumper. It didn't look bad even from the, yeah. the you know, how the, how the, you know, the recording of just like showing the car fucked up, yeah, whatever. But, but, yeah, yeah, no. But that dude posted a video. He didn't post the front of the car, but like you can see that the, the left wheel is like fucking turned left all the way. Yeah. And the tires are blown out. So is the car totaled? No, I don't think so. But he, he's going to need a new rear bumper because it's ripped open in multiple pieces. Probably need a, need a new steering rack and, and a new right. tire. And he's getting his car fixed. And so for sure gonna need an alignment. Yeah, yeah, that definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, let me ask you, man. When you saw the car after, I had said this from my observation. Don't you think that car, that Tesla, could have made it? Let's say he lived in Glendale, which is not very far. It's ten minutes away. You think he could have made it home in that, in that Tesla? Fuck no. Really? You don't think so? I, the radiator of that Tesla was like five hundred feet away from the Tesla. Oh shit. The front of the Tesla was gone, but the headlight was in the middle of the road. And I had to tell one of my friends, I'm like, get the fucking headlight out of the road. Jesus Christ, dude. What the fuck? Well, I didn't know he was going to run. So I showed up there to like just help him. I, was, I, I pulled over to park and I was like, okay, well, you fucked up. Let me, I can hook you up with a tow truck or something if you need it. And then I, <laughs> and then I just started, they just started running. Okay. So the backlash now, everyone's talking shit, punk kids doing it for views, blah, blah, whatever. Yeah. Nobody fucking knew. Nobody fucking planned this shit. Nobody just, I mean, yeah. not like premeditated, you know what I'm saying? It was like, whatever, like, oh, what the fuck's going on? Boom. Okay, cool. You had no idea what was going to happen when you pulled up there. You didn't have a single clue. I mean, I knew that it's a spot where David Dobrik- I know, but I'm saying, come yeah. on, bro. Like, oh, it was I had a, no fucking idea. Yeah, you found out at the fucking, at midnight, it wasn't like you fucking were like, oh, bro, this was happening. Like, when he turned around and flashed his headlights, I mean, even then, I was like, I didn't know he was gonna fucking sail it like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, when he turned so, around and g to flash his headlights, I was like, okay, this guy's what, what gonna do you, give it What do you think run. about someone like, well, first of all, I know Tyrese, and I've known him for many years, right, from music. Yeah, right. When he got into Fast and Furious, I was like, oh, bro, here you go, you've ruined the fucking, you, I mean, they've ruined it so many times, I can't even get into it. Right mm -hmm. after Tokyo Drift, I'm like, dog, this shit yeah. ain't about cars. Anymore. Exactly, it's a fucking Marvel movie now. I walked it's, out the, I walked out watching Fast, the latest Fast and yeah. Furious. So, um, now what I'm asking is, someone like Tyrese, who's in Fast and Furious, doing stupid shit. There, you know, he's in the fucking scene and fucking. Uh, was it part two or part three? Was it part three? I forgot. Tokyo or Drift what? was two or, or three. I think it was three. Yeah, it was three. Okay, so part two, remember fucking he's too with fast, fucking- Too Fast, Too Furious. Too Fast, Too Furious. They're in the fucking thing, jumping onto the yacht. Yeah, yeah. Cars I mean, don't fly. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying, like, you think about it, right? Like, what the fuck? What do you think? Like, I mean, Tyree's talking shit. Like, these motherfuckers are tripping, blah, blah, whatever. I, yeah, I totally understand. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I mean, hey, I was there. I watched some something fucking legendary, but if I didn't care about shit like that, if I didn't care about crazy shit, and especially if I lived on that street, you know, for all I know, I could have I been taken out of my trash and been killed. 
by a flying Tesla. But I mean, it didn't. He didn't hit the street. He just hit the car. Yeah, exactly. Two cars. Yeah, the neighbor walked out and did an interview with uh, one of the news guys. I was there. The, oh, I went back the next day, and it was a news van, news van, news van after news van after news van. Oh, you're fucking crazy, bro. Yeah, and I mean, today CNN emailed me, and they're like, "We want to put this on national television." Jesus Christ. Bro. But anyways, one of the neighbors walked down. And it's like, and his one and only statement was, <laughs> "I fucking, I, I couldn't hold my laughter," and I'm so sorry. He was like. Well, this, the DOT needs to put a sign up saying people need to stop driving Teslas over my house. <laughs> I started fucking dying. I mean, bro, that street's been dangerous. They've been fucking my boy Eric Costin did tricks on there. People have been doing tricks on that street forever. Oh, like, this is it though. They're gonna they're gonna put a barrier up there or something. Something's gonna happen. Oh, there's gonna be a speed bump, Doug. Oh yeah, for hundred percent. There's gonna be a speed bump, hundred percent. That's just it. gonna be on like ASAP. Well, I mean, how many views are you at right now on your YouTube page on, the, on that video? One point two million. Has it the fastest you ever got to 1.2? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The fastest I've ever got to 1.2. And my Instagram's at like 10 million combined. What 10, do you mean? My Instagram post? No, just, just the, the main reel, right? What did, what did the first reel get? Oh. Oh, it's at 7 million. It's at 7? Yeah. Let me see this shit. We're going to fucking check this in uh, in real time. Let's sit here and uh, how do we do this thing? Okay, pull Watch it. my second, the, the middle one. Oh, 5.5M. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 5.5. 3.6. 1.3. So it's at like 9 million combined. Ten, it's almost at 10 million. No, it's at 10. It's at, yeah. that's, that's, that's 10, bro. Yeah. No, it's over 10. Yeah. That's over 10, bro. Yeah. yeah. That's over 10. So my stories are over. My highest story I have ever got. Me too. Ever. Me too. Yeah. In history. Yeah. Is 340,000 views. Okay. I broke 1.2 million views on that first video. Instagram story? My Instagram story said 1.2M. I've never seen. Doc, I looked at my shit. It was at 770 something at like 10 p.m. And then like, you know, by the morning time, it's going to go. Right before it went, dog, I took my kids to school. I look at the shit. That bitch said 1.2M. Alex, do you understand, doc? I've never seen no shit like that my, on my... My highest viewed story was 250K. Yeah. This thing said 500. Yeah. Doug, I've never ever won on a story, bro. On an Instagram fucking story. I have videos that have millions of views, you know, whatever, but I've on reels. Shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've thrown shit away, you know what I mean? Like, I have my throwing. That was fucking insane, bro. So, and then now what CNN does this is going to keep bringing. So that's cool. You it's going to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, man, that's fucking crazy, bro. I mean, how do you feel about the dude complaining about shit, though? I mean, you just, I mean, it sucks. I mean, you know, he's, I, mean, I wrote him a donation. I wrote him a 2G donation. For his right. car, but he's sitting there like claiming that I fucking that everything's my fault. Yeah, like you sabotaged or whatever. I, yeah, nah, fuck so all that. he's he's kind of defaming me in that case. But other than Even that, people hit me up like you know on on the big blog sites like Shader and stuff. Why are you condoning? Shut your bitch ass up, motherfucker! If my son did that, I'd beat his ass. Okay, great. Now what? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like the homies are sitting whatever. I feel, boom. Like, I feel like that dude's definitely really taking advantage of the situation. What about that dumb fuck Dom? That fucking idiot who said he said it's fucking him. Oh, he's being a fucking idiot. What a dump. And the fucking thing is, he's actually admitted it to people. Yeah. I had TMZ hit me up. What a fucking cloud chaser, you know? But what a dumb fuck, right? I know. Is he famous at all? Is he, does he, what, like. He's famous because he used to be on uh, David Dobrik's vlogs. And then he got a whole sexual assault allegation. David Dobrik almost got canceled and he got booted off the team. Oh, that's the dude? Yeah. Holy shit. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. All right. He just ripped off my video. No, it, I know. He's like, yeah. talk. I've seen it. Come on, he's a fucking clown. By the way, I appealed my shit on, on TikTok and it was down for like six, seven hours. But at that point, everyone else's shit has gone crazy. Did, did it go back up? It, got, it went back up. Oh, yeah, I didn't it probably got like 50,000 views. It ain't nothing. It's I didn't even bullshit. bother to appeal, yeah. Um, switching gears, pun intended. <laughs> what is your end goal with your brand? Like, what do you want to achieve? Like, I want to build a you, car. You want to build a car? Build a car. Every I hate every... I. I Every car that comes out, I have something bad to say about it. Have you seen that Chinese dude who built that car, the Apollo, whatever? Yeah. Have you ever seen it in person? Yeah. It looks what, cool. It's just a Ferrari FF, though. Fuck that car. Yeah. <laughs> that like car? No, that, F12, sorry. It's just a Ferrari F12. F, same thing. FF and F12, the same car. Yeah. Um, I can't with these big-ass, like, hyper car, quote, companies. I hate that That shit. are that taking, like, Turbo S's, Huracan's. Fucking Aventadors and like putting a body kit on it and selling for five million dollars. What do you yeah. fuck you think you're doing? Even Konasek, bro. I'm not with it. But Pagani's even worse. I don't give a fuck if it's fucking Horatio. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm not with any of that shit. And I'm sorry, Dan, if you're listening, because I know you listen to my podcast. I love you, bro. 
And you know, Dan owns fucking part of fucking Koenigsegg. I'm not like, it's just... Yeah, I don't think Koenigsegg's... The early Koenigsegg's were definitely just knock off four GTs. <laughs> trying to fucking that bullshit. Fuck all that bullshit. Fuck Hennessy. Fuck all those fucking... I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Are you trying to do like a hybrid car? Are you trying to do a battery car? What are you trying to do? Plug-in. I love plugins. Yeah, fucking, fucking hybrid weirdo, bro. You know the only thing that does bother me? Because I've had a Tesla way longer than you have. I fucking had... Six years now, right? Yeah, yeah six yeah. years. So seven years almost. What do you what do you think about not having sound on? Or them saying that you have to require they're gonna require having like a little fucking sound. Like I that. think it's cool. The, the Teslas don't have artificial sound. They when you, when you floor a plaid, you hear that fucking like starship noise. Yeah, that's 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 the motor. But what do you think about them making like in a year or two having like so when you're driving on the street, you're gonna hear like a or like you know something or they're, they're oh, gonna make some kind of that's sound. That's fucking terrible. They're gonna do it though. They said they have to do it by law. Yeah, I mean, at the end, I'm sure it's going to save a percentage of lives because pedestrians are going to start hearing people driving in Teslas on their phones. Have you ever been in a full self-driving car? Like, for real, for real? No. Oh, man, I got to show you some shit, dude. I, I, I requested full self-driving on my Tesla. Oh, I've been done it. But do you, if you, have, do you have to be over 90 for 30 days straight to get even uh, looked at? My safety score is like a 20-something. My safety score is like a 60, bro. <laughs> so I'm going to show you because a buddy of mine, he's never sat in the front seat of his car ever. Oh, you have full self-driving? No, I don't. Oh. I've requested. I'm in the queue as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My buddy has full self-driving. He's never sat in the front seat ever. He has not been in the front seat of his car yet. I'm going to show you all the videos. He's never been in the front. He's been on this show before. He's on the Bay Bridge going 75, 80, playing video games, not in the fucking front seat, in the back seat. They started to hit people with reckless driving for that. He's already been jailed twice. Really? Oh, he's, wow. he's been on my show. He's been on my show. He's, he's been, bro, you not understand what I'm trying to say to you. He is driving like Anaheim to LA, like those distances in the back seat. He's fallen asleep. He's waking up and gone to his lo- gone to his locations. He's done all kinds of crazy you could think of. I'm gonna I, show you I, the videos. I posted a video of me jumping into the back seat of a Tesla while I was I was doing the same shit, but in like stop and go traffic and ended up fucking on like eight news outlets. Oh fuck, did you? You fucking yeah. but yeah, d- dude, you ain't done what this dude is doing. Really? Bro, he's in the back seat. He he's never been in the front seat with his car. Never. Not ever, bro. Can you imagine? Can you imagine you're on the freeway and there's cars switching lanes, whatever, and you see a car just driving 75, 80 miles per hour and a motherfucker's in the back seat? I'd go brake check him. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking A, man. Um, so to this day, I know you haven't lived a ton of life. You know, you, you've had a pretty good life, right? Uh, yeah. I'm what blessed. would you say is the best moment you've ever had in your entire life? I mean, if you're asking me now, right now, it's seeing a Tesla go fly. Bro, are you, are you you serious right now? I mean, that's fine. You know, I talk. I have I have a full time videographer with me, and we're, we're cruising around last night, the the night of the accident. At like it was like seven a.m. We both couldn't sleep because we're like, what the fuck did we just see? I know. <laughs> we're cruising around. I was in the middle of editing my video when we drove to the grocery store to get some like midnight, like seven a.m. snacks. It was daylight already, and me, me and him looked at each other. I'm like, and I asked him the same question. I'm like, you know, what's the best moment you've ever had in your life? <laughs> and his answer was losing my virginity. And fly, watching a Tesla go fly, I'm like, I can't agree harder. I don't think losing my virginity was the best. Like, that's just, I guess because you're young. It's yeah, different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think there's other fucking moments. And, you know, getting a fucking blowjob for maybe three chicks or something. I know my, my father-in-law listens to this show. He'll be like, oh, that's great, Ben. Um, I mean, I remember, but, other than that, I remember when I was 13, I remember the exact moment when I flew an airplane for the first time. And that felt like the best, most satisfying moment of my life. So I remember that moment very clearly. So gauge it with this, with, with the Tesla flying. I mean, that's <laughs> fine. It's just, I can't, I can't, there's no... 100% confirmed, I told you. 100%. 1 million percent. 1 million percent Elon saw it. And not only did he see it, he saw it a few times. Oh, yeah, Dev. I mean, yeah. at this point. No, but beyond that, I'm talking about when I told you. You see Tesla's stocks? Yeah, they went up. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm a Tesla Why does that make go up? Why I does, have no idea. Why does no seeing Tesla go fly make stocks fucking go up? I don't understand. Speaking of virginity, bro, um, you have a love life? Yes. You do, right? Yeah. I right. never talk about it on the public, though. Okay. Yeah. yeah you, will you at least tell me his name or no? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how you start rumors. I'm joking, bro. Uh, where is your favorite place to drive? Absolutely. Because you love driving, right? You love going all over the place. I don't really have like, I mean, I'm boring. Malibu, you know, Angeles Crest. Like, where is your favorite place to drive? Stunt Road in Malibu. Why? Because the snake is closed. <laughs> okay. Have you ever been up there in, in your, um, on your Ducati or no? Both roads? Yeah. Hundreds of times. It's not thousands. Right. Yeah. Hundreds of times. 
I got to find a picture of me doing a wheelie on Stunt Road and there's a fucking cop behind me turning his lights on. And <laughs> yeah. I got away. I've been on the news so many times being chased by the cops. Like, really? helicopters came on everything. I got away. It's crazy. If you give me a dual purpose bike, like a KTM or something, you're gone. Forget about it. Well, I'll go up fucking 40 flights of stairs, dog. It's impossible. You're not going to get me. And I have a full tank of gas. Forget about it, bro. <laughs> Forget about it. Bikes are too so hard to catch. I mean, if I was, it's impossible, bro. Okay, now if you get if a Kawasaki cop, you know the newer bike, like or a BMW, if a cop turns the lights, I've never, I haven't had that. Thank God, I haven't tried to do it. If a CHP pulls up on you, yeah, in a BMW or Kawasaki, meaning anything over two thousand five bike, yeah, just pull over, bro. You're done. Those guys are like freaking Rossi. It's beyond. You're you're never ever, not ever. Gonna get away. Those you guys are you so may good you may you may break away, uh-huh. but you're not getting away. You know what I'm trying to say? You're never gonna get out of the vision. It's insane. That's why I said you give me a KTM. Go off roading. Yeah, that's different, bro. I'll be going fuck it. I'll jump off shit. Uh wrapping up, bro. Name one Asian man who's inspired you in your life. Oh fuck. I I'm not in the Asian culture whatsoever. Uh, it's I, terrible. I understand, but, yeah. but I mean you do speak Korean. Yeah. Fluent. Yeah. Hung them all, yeah? Yeah. I, I mean, I started learning Korean in fourth grade of elementary school. So that's, what? I thought you, t- you told me you fully speak, though. Oh, I fully speak. Like, my fucking Korean is like fourth grade level. Like, there's no way you're... I yeah. know your Korean is way better than that. I mean, it's recent for... I speak Korean in my house. You right. know what I mean? So, my, my grandma, my mom, my, my dad. You how many still alive? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, no, you're young. What the fuck am I talking about? Just... Did you, so, you can't think of one Asian guy who's inspired you at all in, in life? Anything is my mom, but okay, don't. Yeah, right. yeah. It's your mom. I mean, she sounds like a fucking amazing person. Just what she's done in life and everything. Yeah, I, she's. I'm very, right. I'm very name, proud of her. Name a man of any race or creed that's inspired you in life. Elon Musk. Are you I, fucking serious? I, a lot bro? of people say this, but yeah, it's it's has, so crazy. My, one of my one of my best friends, Paul, he's obsessed with them. That's why I set up the meeting with Elon. He changed the way I live. He changed my social media. He changed my career. Change your social media? How? It's just the, the outrageous shit he posts. The bold statements he makes. I, I would have never had the balls to say half the shit I say if it weren't for him. Okay. I'm so much more myself and free on social media because of his inspiration. Have you ever seen me talk on social media, bro? I'm way more <laughs> I've had to calm down, actually. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I've got to meet him a couple of times. You know, it's pretty crazy, so. That's insane. If I, if I could have dinner, sit down dinner with one person, it'd be, it'd be that dude. Yeah. I don't think it changed anything with me, but I'll tell you off camera. Like, what other multi- 10 figure company goes and fucking launches a car into space you know what I mean no nah, it's pretty crazy it's pretty crazy so every guest who's ever come on behind the baller is uh, asked this last question and um, the last question the final question of the interview is is there anything you'd like to ask me it's a tough question well let me ask you this if I was your kid what would your opinion be People, people probably think I'm a handful. If you were my son, and you know what the crazy part is? You could easily be my son. Right, I could have yeah. easily had you at 26. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. That's not even like far-fetched. In fact, my fucking nieces are your age. You know, and is that, top our, is that, that our age difference, 26? No, 27 ages, but, but there's a year of having the baby. Right, right. So 26 is not far-fetched. I have so many friends who've had kids at... 22, 23, 22, 21, 18, 19, whatever. So 26 is really not crazy at all. So if you are my son. No offense taken. I don't think that it wouldn't be offense taken. Look, I think out of, you got to remember, man, bro, I, you know, I went to Beverly Hills High as a poor kid. So everything was enhanced as far as seeing certain things. You know, when I, when I see a meal, when I see certain things, you know, um, being at the net worth that, you know, that I have now, it, a lot has changed, right? But I've witnessed spoiled kids. I've witnessed kids who've literally said in high school to me, my grandma could buy a Lamborghini every single day for the, next, for the rest of her life and it wouldn't do anything. You know, like shit like that. I've heard shit like that from kids. I'll be real, man. I've been around you enough. And I know you've probably done some punk ass shit I want to smack you for. But <laughs> I've definitely said shit like that too when I was like younger. But, and my kids say stuff that really pisses me off. They say it. They're like, hey, do you know what I, t- I, I really get bummed out. You, you know, know my, who my dad is? Yeah, no, like but that, they, yeah. they say shit like, hey, you know how much money? Because like, think about someone who's famous, like really famous at school. They go to school. With, I mean, you went to school with a bunch of famous kids. And you'd be like, you know, all right. Oh, really? How come your dad doesn't have this, this, and this? They don't know. That's how they gauge it. Yeah. 
And I tell him, so we do okay. We don't do great, whatever. And I live, I know it sounds absolutely asinine. I live pretty humble for how much money I have. My parents can fully convince me in my childhood that we were fucking poor. Yeah. And I try to tell the kids, you know, yeah. but at the same time, I don't think, were you going on private jets when you were like five years old, six years old and stuff? Were yeah. You, on, you were? Yeah, but I mean, that was my only vision in life. Yeah. The, my kids know. Yeah. Look, when when, they, when you have fucking Ferrari, Lamborghini, McLaren, you know, everything, it's they, they kind of get it. They, they get it more now than ever, and that's why I'm very, very careful. Yeah. They get dropped off in a Tesla and Escalade. They get dropped off in shit that we don't, I don't pull up to school in no fucking hypercars, no, no supercars, none of that shit. So my general consensus, I think, of you, and remember, dude, there was a point where I, was, I wanted to beat you into oblivion, right? I remember that, yeah. I think after understanding you better, I think after you understanding how the earth is and, and just people in general, um, human nature, I'd be all right with it, bro. I, I think that you were not just um, a, still a good kid because I, I know enough to where, look, you're smart. You've done enough research to even small little things where it be like legal shit, ramifications of misdemeanors to a felony, whatever. Just the basic stuff that, you know, even a lot of 22-year-olds don't know. I think in general... Even though I do know you want to get a CCW and I'm going to help you get one. <laughs> I don't think that you're going to go and shoot anybody. I don't think you're going to hit anybody. I don't think you're going to hurt anybody. And it, look, I mean, if you look at you, bro, you're 130 pounds, bro. No one's going to, I mean, you're not a, a violent person, whatever. Yeah. Still like a nice person. You, you, you keep your love life private, whatever. And, you know, even like the joking around that me and you have, at the end of the day, I do know you have compassion for like, let's just say that one dude who has issues in the car community. You know what I mean? We didn't think about that. You yeah. still, after all the shit, this guy's wanted to kill you, say this, this, and this, you still feel bad. I know yeah. that you're a good person for that, you yeah. know? So I think um, everything I said about you on this intro of this show, uh, I think you, I really mean it. it. means a lot. Thank you. You know, so I yeah. think that, I think you're a good kid and, I, and I'd be very happy. I, I don't want my kids to be driving that fast anywhere you <laughs> yeah, know but I mean, who it, would, you know? it is what it is man you know and at the same part you know cool man you know you've done well for yourself and um i would straight up tell you i mean i have no problem with that. i think you know me better than that now i'd be like listen you're a fucking jackass and i would fucking kill you and i'd smack the shit out of you no i wouldn't want you as a son craziest thing the last fucking question i could ever thought you'd think of and 100 percent, bro i'd be perfectly fine you're that means a lot thank yeah, you yeah you're all right dude yeah so <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say before we sign off? No, sir. Thank you for having me on here. <laughs> it's like my yeah. first podcast ever. Oh, crazy, yeah. man. Crazy. It's yeah. probably one of the best interviews I've done, too, thoroughly. Ladies and gentlemen, BTB Army out there. Uh, that's my boy, Alex Choi. Yo, Miles, man, throw on some Lakey Lake, and we got a couple commercials to go through. We'll be right back. What's up, guys? This is one of my favorite times of the year. March Madness. Now it's extra special because I am making fistfuls of cash on sports bets with my partners at CaptainPicks.com. That's our family. Our NCAA basketball chat is absolutely killing it. And we've got up to the minute pregame and live bets going on to help you win some life changing money. There's absolutely strength in numbers. And this is the best betting community out there. BTB Army. You've heard me talk about Captain Picks before, and now we want to offer you the opportunity for new users to get a buy one, get one free coupon for all sports. Did you hear what I said? Buy one day, get one free. Buy one week, get one free. Use promo code Cash It. C-A-S-H-I-T, all caps for the captains. If you're ready to step into the big leagues, you can also sign up for an annual plan that's billed monthly to get picks every day by our experts in NBA, MLB, NCAA, NFL, NHL, golf, soccer, tennis, rugby, UFC, prop bets, parlays, and more. Go to CaptainPicks.com. Use promo code CASHIT. It's one word, CASHIT, where winning season is always in season. CaptainPicks.com. What up, y'all? Hope you guys liked that uh, interview. 
Oh, man. is I, Man, I don't know, bro. They're trying to cancel my dog right now. And uh, I'm sure look, he's resilient. And um, I think he'll be all right, man. Appreciate my dog, Alex, coming on here again. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to drop this on Monday or Thursday, but I got a big jewelry episode coming up. It's been a minute because me and Greg did that shit a long fucking time ago, right? And now I got Greg Yuna back on the show. I know he's excited to come back. That's my man, a.k.a. Mr. Flawless, the original. He's really bu- done so much building his, his name back to Greg Yuna, New York. Um, and Jimmy Boy. Jimmy Boy flew in from Houston. So I'm going to have a representation of Cali, obviously me, Texas, and the South with Jimmy, and NYC. But realistically, I'm global. So we're going to talk about everything jewelry. Um, Greg was trying to get Elliot on the show. Elliot went to Los Angeles. Go figure, right? Weird as hell, man. Lil Uzi hit me up last night, actually, about some jewelry. It's kind of crazy. Uh, what do we got going on here? Oh, yeah, guys. Saturday. That's uh day after the mall. Saturday, if you are in New York City, pull up to the Nego Human Made Victor Victor event. As a pop-up shop, there's going to be some fucking sick-ass human made Victor Victor gear. I think there's some ASAP Rocky testing shit. Just real fly human made shit. Um, that's 131 Green Street in Soho, New York City. That is 12 p.m. Saturday. Yes, the Korean John Cusack will be there. I will be there. And on Monday, I believe, Rocky's doing something. I know Pharrell's going to be there. So definitely pull up. There is a new feature on Twitter called Super Follower. And Super Follow. Uh, follower. Yeah, Super Follower. Sorry. It is a new... It is like... It's almost like OnlyFans, except there's no nudity. But the crazy thing is maybe, I guess, you know... Um, Creators, if, if they are, you know, girls, whatever, they want to fucking show their titties on there, I guess they could. Because it's not for, you know, anybody else. You can't see the tweets. You can't see none of that shit. It's only, you know, for people who uh, are super following you. And you could set it to like two ninety nine, six ninety nine, and nine ninety nine. And I figure, I was like, you know what? I'm not about to put the five ninety nine, nine ninety nine. It's two ninety nine. You, you want some more exclusive content? I'm going to be honest with you. If you're listening to this show right now, if you pay two ninety nine a month to be a super follower, I'm going to tweet way more for sure and give more in depth of what's going on and not um put the same tweets i'll I'll promote the podcast and some other basic general sports shit but like more in depth personal you know shit about and and other like just there's more the chances of me interacting with you on a super follower right now is definitely highly likely i want to say it's like a 95 percent success rate right now of me replying to super followers right i got like i think 65 right now i'm pushed it like that but it is a dope thing. I'm going to figure out a way to give you guys stuff for free, uh, invite you places. If I decide to go somewhere, I might even have a fucking barbecue, say fuck it, you know, depending on what part of the city. Uh, speaking of which, I'm in New York. If motherfuckers are out here, holla at your boy. I don't know how much time I got free, but I might have some time tonight. So if you got a, if you got Twitter and you want to super follow, hit that super follow button and we'll figure it out. Now, um, network is trying to get into the break game. And they were breaking cards and breaking, you know, breaking packs and shit, but they want to get into it for real. And I'm the motherfucker that's going to do it with them. All right? So I don't know how you guys feel about it. I've always wanted to do breaks on my own shit, and I could have did it, but we're going to do it in a studio with cameras and all this shit and do it at the network live stuff, and it's going to be fucking fresh. I want to break Panini. I want to break fucking Tops. I want to break everything. In fact, I'm going to do my exclusive breaks for the Ben Baller uh, Chrome 22 on the network, um, you know, app. So we're going to be doing shit on there on the app. Fucking great idea. And uh, I'm excited. I'm going to break fucking, might even fuck around break flawless. I don't know yet. We're going to figure it out. But definitely, um, while I am here though, uh, you know, some people wondering why. None of your business, right? Is it a secret BTB pull up? Maybe. Next time I pull up, you know, I might have an extra day just for the super followers. And, um, you know, I don't know yet. Uh, I am having a, a special little event with Captain Morgan as more private, I'm just giving, you know, transparency here because I don't talk about certain things on the Instagram or on Twitter, but this is, you know, something that I'm doing. And also meeting my agent and uh, my new favorite person at my agency, that is Alina. She might be listening to this. And um, she has made a huge change for me at my agency. Uh, Sports, look, I'm not going to kill you guys right now. We just had a long interview with a, you know, a young Korean kid who's, who's out there doing it. But... Seahawks still have no QB1. I'm not trying. No one said that fucking Drew Locke is the QB1. They're not saying it. And the other day, DK Metcalf, my dog, motherfucking amazing wide receiver, 
Um, and in fact, Tyler and him are the best. And, you know, people have been inquiring about training, with the, you know, going for trades. I think the Packers are interested in whatever. I pray to God that DK don't go. Um, I don't want to see Tyler go either. But without Russ, it's a different thing. I don't know. Russ and Tyler had a certain chemistry. I don't know if it translates to another one. I don't. But he's a great fucking wide receiver regardless. That's Tyler Lockett. Um, DK was defending Drew Locke. He said, what we're going to do is stop the slander against Drew Locke. And I'm like, oh, shit. But, uh, you know, DK was in L.A. the other night. I didn't get to catch him, but he was repping the BB Shaka hoodie. I'm going to be dropping some more again soon. We're going to re-up on it, and we're going to do some uh, different colors and some tees and stuff and everything. Um, there's nothing super significant, right? I think I talked about Quentin Jefferson coming back, which I'm excited about. He's been on the show. There's a couple other signings that we have. We need to get this offense cracking, though. We need a QB. I don't want Baker Mayfield, but I'll take him over fucking Drew Locke. That's for goddamn sure. Um, I do have a 49er that um, is in talks that is with the same agency, and I think we'll we'll get him on here sometime, you know, in the off season, um, hopefully in the near future. But I was thinking about reaching out to B Wags, but I don't know. Got a couple other Seahawks that I want to talk to, but B Wags has every right to go anywhere he wants. Only thing that sucks is I think he's going to sign with the Rams. I, I thought he was going to sign with the Chargers, and I was like, okay, it's going to be kind of crazy. They got such shit. I just didn't want him to go to the NFC West. And definitely not to the Niners. But I'm not exactly happy about motherfucking Jalen Ramsey, Bobby Wagner, and Aaron Donald. That is a fucking scary fucking situation. And he knows us so goddamn well. It's just crazy. So there it is, man. You know, um, Lakers, heartbreak, motherfucking loss last night against pretty much maybe the, the top three best NBA team in the, in the NBA. The only team that is fucking better would probably be the Phoenix Suns. And um, shit. Maybe the fucking Bucks. I don't know. I'm not really crazy about the Heat, man. I'm not, I don't know. But anyways, can we make this play in tourney? I mean, before that game, we were in ninth place. Now we're ninth and tenth. I don't know. We're, we're tied, whatever it is. I mean, we got, I don't know how many games we got left, maybe seven or something. There's only like four home games left. Okay. I don't know. I really don't. Fucking weird, right? This is just such a, and, and then what happens? I, Man, it's just such a weird thing. I got, I got this weird faith that we could fuck around and fuck somebody up in six games because we're just so, we figured things out, but we're just weird. Like, we were kicking some ass early on with some bullshit, you know, motherfuckers on our squad. So I don't know, man. I don't know. But thank you to uh, uh, Jimmy Iovine and my boy Aaron Levant. I will be going to the last home game, which is versus OKC right before we hit this cruise to Mexico. Um, I love floor seats. You already know the deal. Uh, it's great networking, all that and everything. And um, am I forgetting about something? I don't know. You know what? Doesn't even matter because I'm coming back on Monday with the weekend wrap up live from New York recording in my hotel presidential suite in New York City. So guys, I love you. I really do mean that. So funny, man, what people who don't know me could catch me on a bad day and how they might perceive me, think how I might behave. And I think my podcast is pretty consistent. I, I think you you guys get me. Um, I do my little rants here and then when I'm mad at somebody, I don't go out and fuck with people for no reason, right? You know, but it is what it is, guys. Homework assignment, again, please tell a friend to tell a friend about this podcast. Uh as far as business proposals, I'll be honest with you. I had about 113 people submit ideas. One or two were kind of okay. So I don't know, man. I don't know if you guys not, you just, I don't have real, real people, you know, who have solid business plans and, you know, need investors that have something that, that you, you see something that's solid in the future. Hit me. You got the email address. All right. All right, guys. That is it. My man Lakey is going to take us out of here. By the way, I didn't say it in the beginning, but I'm saying it now. This is a Dust Brothers production. That means this is museum quality podcasting. That is professional podcasting. By the way, guys, I can't believe I didn't fucking say this. IF and Co. I see fresh. IF and Co. Internally flawless and Co. My jewelry business has just turned 17 yesterday. 17 fucking years I've been a jeweler. Cannot believe that shit fucking wild. All right, I'm out of here. I love you guys, man. Lakey Lake. Peace. <laughs>